بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so let's try to understand the different features of the next generation firewalls um, as i said i can also say utm but mostly in today's network we call it as next generation firewalls so it's as i said it's a kind of a marketing term used to boost up the sales now there are various uh, the features i'm i'm going to add all the features probably uh, and discuss but the number of features will vary based on the vendors so i cannot say that if you are using a cisco firewall you may get all these features or if you are using a 40 40 gate firewall probably a checkpoint firewall the the features may vary but overall most of the features are common in all the vendors so we'll try to understand what are these features and we'll try to see the basic overview of this so firewalls goes in generations so if you go back like 20 years before now we generally we call it as a firewall firewall is more kind of stateful packet filtering which so supports stateless and the stateful packet filtering that is one of the basic feature of the firewall as you can see now the firewalls not only supports these things they also supports additional features like one of the first generation standard features like if i talk about cisco asa firewall a standard asa firewall which was again acquired by cisco pix you know it was a pix firewall earlier cisco acquired very long back and we refer it as a cisco asa firewall which is a kind of standard firewall or i can say like a first generation firewall like that so there's no first second third generations uh, we can say this is kind of a current generation firewalls what we are using right now today uh, whereas uh, the standard firewall features now the standard firewall features they do support a layer 3 layer 4 stateful packet inspection like i said stateful packet inspection it can maintain now stateful if you remember i already discussed it's going to keep a track of return traffic so it's going to maintain the session table and based on that it can keep a track of the active connections and according to that it can allow or deny the traffic based on the state sessions so it can also do uh, based that is based on the layer 3 layer 4 again layer 3 again based on source destination ip addresses port numbers protocols so that is a kind of basic feature for all again so acls acls are like state state a uh, less packet filtering we already know the acls already and uh, one more thing network address translation now the most of the firewalls are the edge devices so basically they connect on the edge and from there they connect to the internet so you may also require your firewall to be able to do nat network address translation so that whatever the private networks we are using here they should get translated to a public network so not only on the router you can do it on the firewall as well you can configure the nat even you can configure the routing and the vpns now vpns as we know uh, basically you require a vpn for uh, remote connections like let's say this is my firewall and this is connecting to my internet so there may be users sitting on the internet somewhere sitting in the home they should be able to access the resources in your lan or maybe on your dmz network or any specific servers so they can use something called remote vpns so that's what most of the current firewall supports not only that even if you have another lan here maybe a branch office that can also connect over internet and we call this as a side to side vpns so mostly all our firewalls they do support the side to side or the remote vpn options as well not only that even most of the firewalls they do support the triple a concepts like triple a stands for authentication authorization and accounting where uh, let's take an example uh, you can so let's say this is my uh, firewall so if i want to access this remotely remotely by using ssh or telnet we generally configure the username and the password so we can configure some external server like triple a servers or an active directory database which can be used 
so that whenever the user tries to log in, I want this username and the password should be verified by some external, uh, external servers for authentication. Or even you can use authorization and accounting information also can be maintained. So not only that, even if you if you are trying to connect a remote VPNs, let's say, and when the remote VPN is trying to establish, at that point of time also, you require a username and the password to be able to successfully log in. And that information can be verified by using some external servers. So you can integrate your external servers for authentication, authorization, and accounting. So most of these features are supported in most of the standard firewalls. We can call them as a first generation or the, the normal uh, firewalls we can say. Now, apart from this, like if you if you just see whatever the things you, you generally see in the ASA codes or the ASA module, what you have covered, probably all those things are supported in a standard firewall. But that's not enough as per the current requirement. As, as you can see, there are plenty of external, plenty of threads, and there are plenty of attacks happening in your network. So you require some additional, additional security features, and that's what your next generation firewalls provide for you. Now, what are the features they provide? I'll, I'll just come one by one, probably here. The same thing what I just discussed. Uh, the features, as I said, varies based on the vendors. Uh, filtering firewall, the stateful packet inspection. I already discussed this. Uh, it's going to keep a track of the returned packet and any packet initiating will be denied. Uh, also the NAT or access list, this kind of things. And apart from that, we also discussed about the, the VPNs where you can allow the users remotely, they can, they can connect to my gateway and that can be authenticated, authorized based on some external, external accounts. Not only that, you can also, uh, that, that's what the same uh, AAA you can integrate for VPNs as well. Now, apart from that, there will be some additional features what the next generation firewall supports. We call them as a deep packet inspection features. Probably the inspection done at the layer seven. So one of those option is identity-based access control. Now, the, what this identity-based access control means, like normally, uh, normally when we define uh, rules, let's say I have a firewall here and I want to define some rules in that firewall. Like I want to say, if the traffic is coming from this source, if it is going to this destination, if it is going to this protocol, this port number, I can define the rule, whether you permit or deny. So this is what general rules, what we assign. So which means most of the users, most of the filtering is done based on the IP addresses. But in today's networks, if you try to understand, most of the users gets the IP dynamically from the DHCP server, which means, let's say I want to write a specific rule if the user belongs to sales department, if the user belongs to HR department, or if the user uh, is inside the sales, again, you have, let's say a manager maybe a sales manager, or maybe you have a sales representative. So you may want to define the different level of access for these users. So if I go with an IP, I need to maintain a static IP so that I can define the rule based on that IP, but practically that is not scalable in today's network. Because if you, if you try to see, if I'm using a DHCP server, because there will be hundreds of sales representatives and it's not possible for me to go to each and every representative and give the manual IP. But at the same time, I want a separate rules to be given to a manager as well as the sales representative. So which means whenever they log in, uh, at the time of login, what they use, they will be using their user accounts. So what I want is I want to assign the rules based on the user accounts apart from IP addresses. And that's what identity-based control. So we can, we can have some identities, we can identify the user, and we can provide an access control based on the identity of the users. 
Okay, so that's something we can do. And that's what we call it as identity-based access control. So most of the next generation firewalls requires this. So you may want to provide or give access to specific applications or specific resources based on the user accounts. Like the simple example I said, if, if it is a sales manager, then he can make changes. If he's a sales representative, he, he cannot access selected services, let's say. So those kind of things you can authenticate, you can authorize, and even, like I said, this is the same example. If it is an editor user, then he can have a make changes permission, or if it is a other user, then probably there will be other permissions as well. So depending upon the user, we can define the rules. So that is one thing. And the other option, uh, other uh, in feature it supports is application visibility and control. So in, so in short, we call it as AVC. Now application visibility control is a method of identifying the applications and blocking those applications based on blocking. Either you can block the specific applications or limit, or you can allow whatever you want. Like the general example of application level filtering is, let's say you want to allow the Facebook. Let's say the Facebook is again, if someone is accessing the Facebook in your company network, he will be using a normal HTTP application. HTTP, right? So HTTP, HTTPS. It's a kind of web web based uh, browser he will use to log in. But I want to see inside the browser, what kind of application it is. If it is a social media application, and that too, if it is a Facebook, I want to deny the access. So I don't want the user should be able to open any of the social networking sites, let's say Facebook or Twitter. Or sometimes you may want to allow the Facebook, but you don't want to allow the Facebook uh, calling or maybe a Facebook a chat, a specific applications, or maybe there are some Facebook games or any kind of features inside that application. So that kind of visibility is required uh, sometimes. So that's something you can do. Like you want, you want, you know, because normally most of the company networks have some many applications which, which consumes a lot of bandwidth. Like the people are trying to uh, watch some something on the YouTube or download some files from the torrent. So you don't want these applications to be to be allowed. So you may want to do some inspection at the application level. So not just based on the protocol or the port numbers. So these things you can do based on application visibility control. So probably we'll be seeing this as we progress in the configuration a little bit later on. But these all things can be done. Apart from that, you may want some kind of uh, web security or web proxy services. Like one of the common requirement is URL filtering. Now web security means you are trying to access some web page and you want to apply some restrictions for that. Like you, you are trying to access some web page and that particular web page should be denied. So a typically kind of a URL filtering, we call, call it as. Like what I want is, if the user is trying to access a specific website, let's say www.gmail.com. So I don't want any of my users should be able to access any kind of Gmail websites or maybe other websites you can add like facebook.com or xyz.com, whatever you want. So either you can write a specific URLs, manually you can write, but there are some thousands uh, thousands, thousands of URLs. So it's not possible for me to go and write each and every URL. So most of the firewalls support some predefined categories. Like if I say social media sites, automatically your Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, everything, all the social media's websites and their applications automatically comes inside that. So if I say any gaming sites or news websites, gaming sites or news websites, so if I tick this option, automatically all the new name, all the news websites will come into that category and we can allow or deny. 
So most of the current generation firewalls or web filter supports web filtering features with a predefined categories. And we can select from that, either permit or deny. And these categories, uh, the list of websites will be updated automatically. And not only that, even if you are allowing a specific URL, let's say I'm saying, okay, you can access nwa.com website, no problem. But there is a possibility that that particular web page may contain some kind of malicious code, which can infect your computer, in, which can infect your network as well. So not only you want to allow or deny a specific URLs, but if, if a specific URL is, if it is allowed, you need to make sure that it is clean. So it is not having any kind of malicious codes or malicious uh, kind of URLs. So, so you want, you also want to do that.